for the following exercise. Determine whether the relation represents y as a function of x. All right. So in order to do this, we first have to solve this equation for y in order to determine whether y is a function of x. All right. That'll be our first step. All right. And that's what I detailed on the bottom left. All right. I like to list things out in terms of steps. So the first step here is let's solve the equation for y. All right. So I'm going to set it on up. So this is 3y plus 5 divided by then 7y minus 1. The first thing is what I'd like to do is basically do a, I mean, we can look at this as a cross multiplication here. Uh, we can also look at this as taking uh, this side and multiplying it by 7y minus 1. If I multiply the right hand side by that, I also have to multiply the left hand side by the same value. It doesn't really make a difference uh, how you look at it. Uh, I'm looking at it as, like I said, a cross multiplication. So this will become 7y minus 1 times then our x value is equal to then, remember this x is over 1, so when I cross multiply these two, I just get this value by itself. So this is going to be 3y plus 5. Okay, now what I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to distribute this x, okay, to both terms here, right? Really this is distributed over both terms. I should actually add that parenthesis there. Without the parenthesis, it's technically not right. So I have to add that parenthesis. So I'm going to distribute the x, all right? So this becomes 7, uh, we'll call it yx, or it doesn't matter, you can call it xy, right? Minus x will then be equal to 3y plus 5. Now what this does is this will begin to allow me to try to combine like terms, all right? So I'm going to now bring the 3y on over to the left. In order to do that, I have to subtract it, right? So it's going to be minus 3y from both sides, okay? And then at the same time, I'm going to bring, because I want to get rid of this x, I'm going to bring this x on over to the right-hand side, so I have to add it, okay? So after I do that, we're going to have something that looks like this now. 7yx minus 3y will then be equal to, we'll call it x plus 5. Okay, now I realize that I have the same variable in both the first term and the second term. That means that I can factor out the common term of y from both terms. So now I can make this look like this. So y times 7x minus 3 is equal to then x plus 5. And lo and behold, now I can divide this result, right, by 7x minus 3. And I can also then divide the right-hand side by the same thing, 7x minus 3. And now I'm going to be left with my uh, formula, okay, that's solved for y. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. So y is then equal to x plus 5 all over 7x. Minus three. So there you go. Okay, hardest part about this problem is solving this thing for y. But there's the function. Now what you can do is you can plug this into the calculator. Right? And if we plug it on into the calculator, we're gonna graph, we're gonna get a graph, okay, that looks kinda like this. So let's see. The graph will probably look very similar to this type of a this type of a picture. Something like this, and then something like, you know, something like that. Okay, it's approximate. Not supposed to cross the axes, but that's okay. And I know that um, the value of x here in the denominator cannot be uh, 3 sevenths, because if it is, uh, then this whole denominator becomes zero. So I know that this there's that there's no intersection of a vertical line, okay, right at that location of, of 3 sevenths. So I'm just gonna actually draw that on in right now. Okay, so this is 3 sevenths. All right, now, next thing is, I'm going to then uh, conduct my vertical line test. All right, so what I just drew there is not the vertical line test yet. I just drew a vertical line, and that vertical line uh, happens to not intersect the graph at any location. All right, now that's not a big deal at all. All right, but the vertical line test says that if a vertical line does not intersect the graph more than once, meaning it can intersect it zero times or could intersect it one time, if it intersects at zero or one, the graph is indeed a function, okay? That's what it says. So now if I, I know this line I drew doesn't intersect it at all, and therefore that could mean it's a function. If I drew this vertical line here, it intersects it only once, a vertical line here intersects it only once, a vertical line over here intersects it only once, and we can keep on going, right? And what we realize is the pattern 
that the vertical line, whatever vertical line we draw, will not intersect the graph more than once. And therefore, we can unequivocally say that it is a function. So this formula here does represent a function. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button. See you in the next video. Take care.